As the economy began to rebound after the Great Depression, some black entrepreneurs were positioned for growth. S.B. Fuller had survived the Depression by selling soap door to door on Chicago's South Side. Soon, he had a growing team of agents selling a range of personal care products. When I was a kid, I remember all the Fuller people. I remember the Saturdays and you hear them shouting. They would have, they would get together and it's like a football coach. You know, in every city, you had these people meeting every Saturday and go out and selling these Fuller products. Starting with just a sixth grade education and $25, Fuller built a conglomerate, including a department store, a theater, a string of black newspapers, and a factory. But in 1947, Fuller made a move that would make him one of the richest black men in the country. He purchased a cosmetics company called Boyer International from a white man. The person who sold it to him did not say, I sold my company to a black man. He bought it in secret. And then S.B. Fuller started producing products that white people were buying. And he hired white salesmen. By the mid-1960s, Fuller was a multimillionaire, employing more than 5,000 people, both black and white, across 85 offices in 35 states. Then, white Southerners got wind of who was the boss. The South had long accepted African-American selling goods and services to other African-Americans, but for an African-American to sell to white consumers, especially in the South, that was considered to be an absolute no-no. He decided that he would have a company convention whereby he would let his employees know that he was proud of them. And here this black man walks out. When it was publicized that a black man owned certain business entities, that created a firestorm. The white response was, was immediate. They boycotted the product. That was like a turning point in his business activities. And it was sort of a tragic story as, as time went along because after that episode, he declared bankruptcy. 